Hey guys, how's everyone doing tonight? Let's take a look at these. Uh, let's take a look at these defiance funds and see how we how we're doing. All right, I've got the profit boxes drawn for tomorrow. So, but here's what we have for JUPY. We have these guys sold the fifty two fifty five strike two hundred and sixty one times for sixteen sixty nine. So that makes the break even fifty two thirty eight. 31 break even of course is the option price minus the strike price or the yeah the strike price then you subtract the option price and that's your break even all right these guys are going for 435,000 take them to nine cents positive on the month and a dividend estimate of 48 cents so far so uh is that right? I always check it. Yes, that is correct. All right. That is a correct estimate. Triple QI. These guys sold the 18350 strike for $78.45. The difference between 18350 and 7845 is the break even. It's 18271. So these guys are going for $1.2 million, which would take them to 11 cents positive on the month, be getting off to a pretty darn good start if they were able to do this. It's a dividend estimate of 23 cents, which is way low. I am confident uh, that that will that that will improve uh, improve soon. We had one day in here that they sold an option that didn't get any extrinsic premium, just 50,000 bucks, and it brought the average down. So uh, that I'm pretty sure that'll come back up. Now, IWMY, these guys sold the 2105 strike 759 times for, call it $9. Nine subtract 20, you, you take 2105, you subtract nine, you get you get uh, 2096. So 2096 is the number we're rooting for tomorrow for the Russell to close over. If we close at the strike price or above, it'd be a max profit, which would be a $673,000 profit. Take these guys to four cents positive on the month. And uh, the dividend estimate would be a dollar ten right now. So yeah, that's right. So that would be all right. All right, now I'm working on a new spreadsheet for Spy T. It's a work in progress. So uh, this is how many Spy shares they have. Basically, this fund just owns Spy shares. It does a little call spread on top of it that just gives it a little enhanced, low income, but it it doesn't uh, it doesn't drastically affect it as much as the put uh, the the naked put does. And it's probably because it's a spread. Spreads just uh, you know, spreads are not as big of an obligation as a as selling a, a put naked or it's cash secured, but just selling a put, you know, and just letting it do what it's going to do. So let, selling a put without having an offsetting position. This one, we're selling a call, but we have an offsetting position. We sold this strike, which is the 52. Wait, we sold the 40. We sold the 5240 strike and then we bought the 5255 strike. So we are on the hook. We're short, and that's dangerous. So we're short between 40 and 55. But at 55, we're long again. And we own spy share. So um, so this is a totally different trade. So I'm keeping track of the dividend they paid. I'm using Corey's formula that she helped me make to estimate the time remaining in a month and then estimate from there the the dividend and right now i'm just at 14 percent, and these guys are supposed to pay out 20 percent, and they do pay out 20 percent. so i think that either there's something wrong with my calculations or else this is only the second day of the month by the time the end of the month gets here they'll have the the math will work out maybe these days they didn't catch very much um premium but you can see this day they sold an option for nine they they caught six dollars this first day the second day, they caught $5.95. Maybe they want to catch more than that. Um, now, the risk on these spreads, on the $6 spread, for instance, uh, two days ago, on Thursday, 
they sold us they they sold the spread they made six bucks right well the spread was 15 points wide the 15 points wide is the difference between the bot the bot strike and the sold strike so that's the that's the risk on the trade is 15 points less whatever you got less six so 15 less six is nine so this trade risked nine and basically this other trade's just a nickel different they're basically both trying to make six risking nine to make six so the thing the thing that will happen is if the market goes above the sold strike so in this case if the spx goes above 5240 tomorrow it's costing these guys it's costing us well let's say this if they go above the bot strike for sure if the market closes above the bot strike that cost us uh six dollars versus if we would have just had the the shares long six dollars is what it costs six dollars was our buffer but if we have an up day that cost us if we have a down day it, that that six dollars helps us but um the six dollars buffer comes to 2.24 percent per you know that's per share when it actually comes to 23 cents that's what the total this is the one day yield G8 minus, okay, let me look at this. Uh, G8, yeah, the premium earned divided by the shares outstanding. Okay, so no, that should not be percent. That should be dollar. Okay. This is the, the spread earned two cents a share. So then I just use this formula to calculate it over a month. Going like this, it might make 23 cents this month um that's all that is but yeah they're earning two cents a share on this on this position if you look at the if you look at jeppy for instance to compare you'll see jeppy makes a lot more per share well in fact we can find out what jeppy makes per share here's here's jeppy for tomorrow and jeppy's per share number I just keep the running. I used to keep the the per share number separate, but anyway, it's six cents. This last day it was six cents. So um you can see, and Jeppy pays what 40, 50 percent. This new target fund's gonna pay 20 percent. Our math right now on today's trade says it could pay about 13 percent. So that would make sense because it's it's uh, about one third, it's bringing in about one third the premium, so it can pay about one third. And, uh, but it also has a lot less buffer, about one third as much buffer. So on a down day, you would rather have the, you would rather have Jeppy, but on an up day, you would darn sure rather have this one. All right. So uh, I'm going to keep trying to, I'll keep making that spreadsheet better. Let's look at the charts. Let's look at the 24 hour stock market. This is NASDAQ, 24 hour NASDAQ. It's going straight sideways. Same story with ES, which is S&P. Got to sell off this morning. And then since then it's just ground, it's just grinding sideways. Same thing, Russell sold off this morning, grinding sideways. We'll check into TLT. All right. Let's check uh, Coney. All right, so there's Coney. They have a ladder comprised of, uh, now started. They have a ladder comprised of two strikes. You can see these guys have been doing great lately. They sold an option that was out of the money that week and they never did get to it. But this week they sold one that was a little closer to the money and they blew it out, but ended up closing right at the max profit. That couldn't have worked out any better for them. Uh, similar story this week. 
they sold an option that was actually not that much out of the money at all, but actually where they closed out on Friday was right about where they're supposed to be. You want to be right at that top line. That's max profit for the seller is the strike price. So now they have a ladder of two of them. Obviously, they'd rather be by the higher one, but we're looking for about a, a price of 285. All right, here's Misty. Misty trades MSTR options. All right, these guys have an aggressive ladder with three different strikes, and they have a lot, long way to go and can make a lot of capital appreciation this week. That would be a gigantic week for these guys. Here's NVIDIA. These guys are going sideways today. Their ladder still, they have a ladder of three different strikes. Their guys, their um, fund managers have been putting their ladders out there and this week, well, that was Friday. Let me see here. So this week, it was right here on Friday. They put their ladder here and never did get there. And then they closed down here. Then they put, you know, they laddered three different strikes and they got to the lowest one right by the end of the week. Then this week, you can see they, I guess they just had one strike. If I got it right, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem right. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, they never did get there. They sold it just a little bit out of the money. Never did get there. Well, then this week we'll see. They they have a ladder of three, three different or you know three different strike prices. Uh, let's see, Misty Coney. Uh, let's look at old uh, Tesla. Oh, look at that! It looks like they rallied right on the close. They're kind of contending with this uh, trend line down here. Nice rally. All right, and they have two different strikes, 185 and 182.50. So we'll see how that works out. That's the price we're looking for for these guys by the end of the week. All right, buffer report. NASDAQ index. Look at this. Triple QI was probably the best performer of the day. Well, I don't know. Feppy got it just a little bit. We'll give Feppy the edge. YMAG. It goes FEPI number one, YBANG number two, and triple QI number three. Then behind it was, you know, the other ones. Probably QDTE would be next. And then I triple Q or JEP Q. Oh, that's not bad. All right, single stocks. It just, you know, Misty, Coney, Sky. Pepe. Pepe had a lot of buffer. Pepe did a great job. You know, when your parent asset loses 3%, you're only down not even a percent. That That's awesome. That's the way it's designed to work. Same thing with MRNY. Down about a third of the parent. That's that's great buffer there. Not so much with Apple that got just all of the parents downside. Now it's just one day. So, and definitely not so much with Tesla. They got all of the parents downside and then some. All right. Well, uh, there's the one day NASDAQ and ULTY also had a rough day today. And I didn't look at the, I need to look at that one. Uh, I'm sure it had a stock in it that got killed or two, probably these crypto stocks. It's probably exactly what it was. And so they lost NAB today, even though they made extrinsic. Their NAV's going to sell off because uh, I guess their underlines did. Yeah, but FEPI, YMAG, and Triple QI look really good. In the single stocks, we'd have to say AMD. Well, we'd have to say AMD and Phoebe look the best out of the single stocks today. 
but really there's no huge disappointments ever, you know, uh, everything was in line or performed, performed well, or, or had a lot of buffer. We didn't have any outperformers on the downside except for Tesla. And that was just barely. And who knows, that's just one day. As the week, as we get deeper into the week, we we're going to quit looking at the one day result and start looking at the week result. But you know, tomorrow and then Wednesday and Thursday, we'll look at the week change, and it's uh, it's a better indication, I think. We might also look at the daily change. All right, I'm going to let you guys go, but let's just check into 24 hour futures and make sure they aren't moving. Looks like the Nasdaq is trying to move. Look, they got this big green bar. This, these are 30 minute bars. So he's trying to break out of this freaking call it a bull edge or something. Let's see. SP, uh, not really. Even NASDAQ's trying to go and Russell's still stuck down here. We'll see. It looks like it's trying to go. It's on a green bar. The bar's on its high. We'll see where we are by the morning. But right now, this is just about as dead as it gets. Let's, oh my gosh. That's not good. That sold off under my line. That's key. So, so that is not good. Not good for a crypto bull. Wonder what's going on. Hmm. Well, interesting. It was already kind of a rough day for Coney. We've well, we've already looked at Coin, but uh, and Coney, but. Let's look at Feppy. We don't look at Feppy very often. Feppy looks good. It's a good looking chart. Higher lows. Feppy's just, you know, in an uptrend. That's just an upward trending chart, making higher lows and looking looking strong. All right. I'll be back with you guys in the morning and we'll see where we open up in relation to where the profit boxes are. I promise to have more spy T content going forward. Uh, I mean, I love spy T. I'm just having a hard time finding interesting content. Uh, one of the commenters said that, said uh, that he didn't find it boring. I didn't mean to say spy T was boring. I'm just, Try, I just want numbers that mean something, it, but it's definitely not boring. Making money is never boring. All right, guys, you guys have a great evening.